All right, so we are continuing and finishing up assignment five, our spot illustration. We find it under assignments or unit modules. And I'm going to scroll right down to assignment five, and I'm going to point out all of these extra resources you have. One made by me, which is also in the assignment sheet, but then three made by past digital honors students, right? One on digital inking, one on digital coloring, one on uh, coloring basics going from sketch to duotone. And because we're introducing beyond flat color today, let me just scroll through that one quickly. It will re refresh uh, our minds on what we've been doing. So the first thing you do, you sketch out your ideas, you refine the sketch, and then you create the best clean line art you can. That's digital inking. It's ideal if you can turn that into a vector, right? Because then it scales. And then flat base color, right? So this is also what I call flat local color. Local color is the color that the thing is, no matter the lighting condition. So this fox is this kind of orangish color. This turtle is this green color. This eagle is this brown color. You don't see any highlights or shadows. That's just the local flat color. The local flat color of a ripe banana is yellow. Right? This is the next stage, duotone. Duotone is when you split that local flat color into a highlight tone and a shadow tone. And you can do it in multiple ways. You can do what's called hard edge duotone, which we see right here in the fox's tail. In animation, this is called cell shading. And that's where it looks like there's a shape just kind of cut out of it. There's no outline around it, but one color Ch abruptly changes with a hard distinction, a hard edge to a shadow color. So highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow. Now on the, uh, the eagle here, because this is meant to be metallic for her character design, this is also duotone. You have a hard edge duotone here with the light gray to the dark gray, the dark gray to the middle gray here. That's hard edge, but then you also have this gradation. That's called soft edge duotone. Why is it still duotone? Because duotone is always doing just lights and darks based on the local color, right? And that depends on where the light is hitting. So the light's hitting from this direction, which means lights on that side, shadows on the other side. But honestly, you don't need to be an expert in light logic to use digital coloring with duotone. You just need to know what looks good. You know, where should the shadows be? What makes sense? You'll almost always have shadows underneath the chin. That helps to accentuate a character if you're doing a monster, say. This is how you organize your layers. We've been talking about this. And then this was an example she did to show duotone, right? So once you have your flat color, you can then go in and you can find your shadow shapes. And this is what I'm gonna be showing you today with my example. Like the shadow shapes on the hat, on the wing, on the shoulder, on and on and on. And you can spend quite a bit of time building those shadow shapes. I'll pause it there, because you see how effective those duotones are at just giving it a little bit more dimension. Even when they're really slim, like on the cigar. And then she adds on what's called full spectrum color after that, which is this. So full spectrum color is when you have not just your local color variations anymore. This head now has red and orange in the greens. And it has grays and browns and greens in the hat. You know, it, it just, you're able to do basically any colors you want anywhere you want but you always build it up with flat local color first. This is just another way of thinking about it because there's so many ways you can do it. With normal mode, I, sh I was showing you at the end of last class how you can kind of cut away, but you can also use different blending modes. You can use multiply mode, you can use darken mode, you can use overlay. She has this nine second example of the difference between digital coloring and digital painting. So digital coloring always goes behind an outline, right? Digital painting like this 
is all just shape and color based. All right, that's it. So those can help review as well. These are my slides. This is what we've been looking at. And we've gotten this far, you know, with our flat color. And now we're starting to talk about duotone. Now flat color is great if you have the right flat colors. So that's to me always the challenge. How do you get the best possible flat color? And I actually, in the demo, I had only worked up the, the monster itself, not the guy in the back. So I actually worked up some new flat color. So this was my flat color in the last video. That's what I was finishing up. But what is the most important thing? I'll turn the white background on. The most important thing is to kill whitey, to get rid of all these white shapes and fill them with your own color. One way you can check that is you can take your blank white layer and make a duplicate of it and then fill it with middle gray. This is a very common digital coloring technique. So if I say edit fill with 50% gray, I can easily see what still needs to be filled in. So over the weekend, what did I do? I adjusted my flat colors, filled them all in. Now everything is filled in. There's nothing left unfilled. What's so nice about that is then I can simply take my paint bucket, I'll turn on my color references, right? And I can easily make a change just immediately because all these colors are already filled in. I'm doing this on a duplicate because it is hard to find the right color. And there's no such thing as like the perfect color. And on and on and on. But once you've, it's called flatting. Once you've flatted it, they can all be easily adjusted. I'm actually thinking I like this purple. So I might steal that purple. So to steal a color, you just hold down option with the paint bucket, turns it into the eyedropper tool, and now... I'll replace it here. That orange is too strong and replace it with that purple. Yeah, I like that better. All right. Oh, and then I missed something right there. But these are my flat colors. Now, this could be the end. I could say, okay, this is my finished spot illustration. And that meets all the requirements. It's a full color spot illustration with vector line art. It's pretty clean. Why not? But I can also push it a little bit further. And I have to teach you, so I have to show you that. I'll be right there. So the next stage would be to add uh, highlights and shadows to each of my flat colors. And an easy way to do that, that I showed you last class, is to make a duplicate of it. So Command J, then go to Image Adjustments, Levels, and then I'm going to make all of the colors darker by pushing the mid-tone slider on Adjustments for Levels to the right. Push everything darker, about halfway to the edge. Then I'm going to go to Image Adjustments, Saturation, because the shadow tones, they are the same color, but we want them to be less intense. And I'm going to take the saturation down by about half. So now these are great shadow values for my local flat color. And the only one it doesn't affect is the bright, bright white. Everything else is totally affected. Here is when I turn on my gray background. And I don't really need my color references so much anymore. Though they can still be informative. You know the dot in the center of the eye? The color? Yes. Ah, you're right, it's not. So let's color that in. So I'm going to go to my flat color layer and use my paint bucket and let's fill it in with something. How about that? And you know what? I'll fill in... Yeah, everything else is just... is just black. So... Yeah, I filled those in. Okay, so now these shadow tones, 
That's what I'm going to call my duotone shadows. Now, how do I reveal where I want the shadows? I use my, if I want hard edge duotone, which is what they use in animation, it's what we can see pretty clearly here. Hard edge duotone, you cut shapes out where you want the shadows to be. So I'm going to cut the shape here on the top of this kind of helmet horn and then just delete and that will reveal the highlights. What's nice about this method is that it will cut across all of your colors. So you don't need to worry about anything except what your highlight shapes are. So on the sword, I'm just going to take a big chunk out of the back of the sword here and just delete. Right? And then I might want to make it a little bit spiffier up to up, up there. whatever you think will complement your illustration, right? So for this, for, if for there, are, there are exact ways. If you're studying animation, you learn about, you know, primary light, key light, secondary light sources, fill light. But for an illustration, it's just at the end of the day, you want it to look good. So I can use multiple light sources. You know, this could be light hitting from this side, light hitting from this side. Like if I want to highlight on this arm so that it stands out on the chest, that just means light's hitting from this direction. And so I play that up. And then that would mean light would hit the top of this wing pretty strong. So I'm going to come around, answer questions about how to set up duotone. And then we get to have fun doing this. And remember, it's on a duplicate of your flat color, so I recommend locking your flat color. All right, I'm going to save my work. So with this duotone hard edge, I can just cut out shapes. It's easy to get a little too enthusiastic and to cut away a lot, and that's not usually for the best. So you want to keep it fairly limited and specific, right? Now remember, the great advantage of digital is all of these colors can be shifted and altered a little bit. And just like it takes time to find your right flat color for the very best portfolio piece, it can take a lot of time to get all of these duotone shapes well chosen. But when you look at professional work, especially in commerce, in commercial art, they're not always taking that time. You don't always have that luxury. So you just find ways to complement what you've already done and you leave it at that. Knowing that as a digital file, you can always come back and improve it later. So the way I think about it is where do I want the eye to, to go? What do I want it to pay attention to? And those are the only areas I will add highlight. So if, if I want this face to be a little bit more of a focal point, I'm going to make sure that it's cut out in a cleaner way than I did. But you can get pretty complex duotone shapes as well. So for instance, I could do something called scalloping, which is like this. And it's not something in my line art. It's a shape I'm doing just with the cut edge of the duotone. And that might make it just a little bit more visually interesting. Now, other options I have. Remember, I just made a duplicate of my flat color. 
I can always just, <coughs> excuse me, 